I'm Joseph Iskia and I'm talking with Dennis Tafe. He's an exercise physiologist from the Edith Cowan University in Western Australia. And he was one of the best of the best oral presentations here at ANZUP 2017. So I've got the opportunity to catch up with him so he can tell us a little bit about our research. Good. Dennis. Thanks. Well, look, what this was, this is a secondary analysis from an exercise trial that we undertook. These are men from the radar study. So we actually randomised 100 men from the radar study to a year-long exercise trial um, where they received six months supervised exercise or and then six months of a home-based program. And what were the men in the radar study? What had they had? Oh, these are men that had been previously treated with either six months or 18 months of androgen deprivation therapy uh, with radiotherapy and then with or without a bisphosphonate as well. So the, essentially four groups. But it, what we're looking at is really just a two factor group, six months versus 18 months. Essentially what we found was that there were improvements at the end of the trial compared to a comparison group for muscle strength uh, um, and physical function. But when we looked at changes in lean mass and fat mass, they weren't actually much of a substantial difference between the two. So we actually went in and, and looked to see if there was a moderating effect of ADT time. And actually we found that there was, in that the Men who were long-term users of ADT actually had a better beneficial effect to exercise than what the short-term users actually were. So that's almost the complete opposite of what you would have expected when you were creating your hypothesis, I guess, was it? Oh, well, look, this is a bit of an exploratory study. The thing to take into account here, these were men with a three years post-ADT cessation. So it's quite a long time since. Um, and actually what we found, there was no baseline differences between the two groups when we started the trial, yet the response was quite substantial between the two. So for instance, in lean mass, those who were formerly um, the longer term users of ADT gained up to nearly one kilogram um, for lean mass, and there was a um, bit of an effect for fat mass as well, but no changes within the short term group. And also, um, when we looked at muscle performance and physical function, the improvements were better in the long term than shorter term group. Not readily apparent why we found that difference. What we actually put it down to is that there actually may be some residual effects of treatment that just aren't really recognised by the methods that we're um, testing men for now. So the deficits that they have they may be actually greater, they're just um, what people appreciate at the moment. Okay. And you were saying in your talk that uh, in an era of targeted medicine, exercise physiologists have come to town. Yes, this is, this is actually what it was all about, it was because when you do an exercise trial, that doesn't matter whether they're currently on treatment or before treatment or after treatment, you always get some who respond in a much better fashion than other people. Essentially you have responders and often non-responders. The question always is when you have prescribed exercises, you want to prescribe the right exercise for the right group that responds um, under the right circumstances. So here we actually found that the long-term previous users responded better than the short-term previous users and they be the ones that you'd be especially trying to um, um, encourage to undertake exercise to sort of offset any residual effects they had from the treatment. And you had a term for that, didn't you, in your talk, which I don't want to steal from you? The term that I had Targeted for, exercise oh, medicine. The, it's target exercise. It's like the precision <laughs> medicine. Yep. It's precision exercise medicine. Oh, it's very good. Thank you very much, Des. It's good. been a pleasure Thanks. chatting to you. Thanks. Great.